Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. What's going on, guys? Now, Gennady Golovkin versus Daniel Jacobs pay-per-view numbers are in, and uh, they're not much of an improvement over the Lemieux uh, Golovkin pay-per-view fight. Uh, it's reported that the fight did no better than 160,000 pay-per-view buys. Uh, did not go over 200,000. Nothing like that. So. My thing is this: I'm a, I am a Gennady Golovkin fan. I think he's the best middleweight in the world, and I think it's not that's not even a question. Um, but boxing, at the end of the day, ultimately is a business, and it sucks to say that, but it is true. So, with such underwhelming pay-per-view numbers in the second fight for Gennady Golovkin, does um, this actually give him less leverage in negotiations for a Canelo fight? Because let's face facts, guys: Canelo is uh, a much bigger star from a pay-per-view standpoint. Then Golovkin, um, I believe his fight with Cotto did 800,000 views or something, 800,000 buys. His Lena Smith pay per view did about 400,000 or something like that. So he's shown the ability, whether it's against a, a unknown guy here in the states like Lena Smith or against a household name like Cotto, that he can do pay per view numbers. While Golovkin, on the other hand, has fought two of you know the better middleweights in the division. While they don't have huge names, still two of the better middleweights in the division. And for all the talk of him being the big star, the numbers haven't quite measured up. So my thing for Golovkin is, it almost seems like, and I never really thought about this before the fight or anything like that, but I'm thinking about it now. Um, it almost seems like with the more time passing by, with more pay-per-views and all that stuff, it, he's lo he's going to lose a lot of leverage in these negotiations. Now, is there an equalizer in the no negotiations? Yes, that equal that great equalizer is the fact that Gennady Golovkin has most of those belts, and if he's able to capture that, that if, if there's a way he could fight Billy Joe Saunders before the Canelo fight and get that and become an undisputed champion, then I believe that's the great equalizer in negotiations. Not to have some, some uh, most of the belts, but all the belts. He has to have all the belts, or else. I believe it will come down to him having to sign some sort of flat fee. Now, do I think he should sign a flat fee? No, because I think, you know, it's almost like you, you look at box history. Um, there's been a lot of guys who are household names, you know, that, that, that were bigger names than other uh, fighters in the division, but that, that needed that opponent to, to define their career. Look at me with the Pacquiao. Look at um, Hopkins De La Hoya. Look at, um, you know, uh, some of the other guys, you know, Ken Norton, Ali, Ali, Joe Frazier. Um, Ali, just anybody versus Ali, really. He was, he might have been the name, but he also needed the, the, some of the guys that were deemed as lesser names uh, that were still great fighters to kind of, you know, carry his career forward and build that legacy. And I believe this thing, it's no different for Canelo. He might have, be the bigger name because of the Mexican fan base and the fact that he's been in fights with some of the biggest names in boxing, such as Cotto and Mayweather. So that, that's obviously helped. And anybody who's fought those guys on the pay per view stage has become somewhat of a notable name and for him he's become he become a bigger name than most because not only has he fought those guys but he has a Mexican fan base behind him so um for Golovkin he's definitely an all-time great in my opinion an all-time great middleweight but he he, he that doesn't matter that being an all-time great doesn't always equate to pay-per-view sales so um I think there's going to be some sort of had a media that that, that Tom Lawler is going to have to compromise some stuff for Golovkin and these numbers and, 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 the, and the underwhelming buys might have actually hurt Golovkin more than it helped so that's, that's just my overall take on it maybe you guys can enlighten me and give me a new take on things but I think the pay-per-view numbers as much as I'm a Golovkin fan as much as I think that he should um, it should be you know 45 55 or 60 40 um, he might want to have an assigned some sort of flat fee or take less money um, but it, regardless, Golovkin uh, Canelo is a huge fight, and I want to see it. And uh, people who aren't even box fans want to see it. So um, hopefully, uh, this doesn't you know stall the negotiations. These, these numbers don't become an even bigger point for Oscar and company to stall the negotiations. Because I, I think it's possible. I think it's possible that these numbers are going to make it. These pay per view numbers and the, and the unwilling buys will make it harder for the fight to get made. But you guys, give me a take down below on what you think about this. Uh, just what do you think? What do you think is gonna happen as a byproduct of this? And uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Take the time to subscribe, and you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.